Right, Shalom, Israel, Shalom, Shalom. This is Brother Obadiah from New Wine Congregation. And I want to give all and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the name of the God of Israel. And Yahweh Shai is the name of who the world calls Jesus Christ. And this um this is gonna be a a touchy subject for some brothers and sisters, or a, a, a touchy topic for brothers and sisters. But it's mainly to help brothers and sisters, man. So what I'm really going to be touching on tonight is going into like childhood trauma. or you no? Know, because if you think about it, man, especially us so-called black people, as a nation of people, we, we went through a lot, man. Still going through a lot as a people, even to now. But as we was younger, a lot of us went through a lot of stuff because we going through these curses. When you read, for people that anybody that is new, when you read Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15 on down, those were the curses that was put on us, the Israelites, for disobeying God and, and breaking his covenant. So a lot of us um, had, a, had a crazy childhood, man, especially a lot of our people grew up in the hoods. Um, a lot of us had crazy childhoods, rather it was, um, uh, I, I done heard a lot of stories, man, rather it was, the dad, uh, you had seen your dad uh, beat on your mom when you was younger. You may have didn't have your dad in your household. And um, your mom raised you, but she was on drugs and stuff. And she barely didn't want to deal with you. You know, she she was so deep into drugs and men. That's all you seen. Rather, it was you lost a loved one. Or you lost uh, your brother, son, and gun violence. Rather, you a man or a woman and you been... Um, how can I say it without getting the video taken down? You've been, you've been touched on, I'm going to say that, as a child by somebody, or you may have been taken advantage of, if, if y'all know what I mean. So if you've been, you might have been taken advantage of when you was a child, now you grow up, it's like, dang, now you kind of in the head, you know, you kind of messed up in the head. And I, I want to make this video, I want to make this video because a lot of times people come into this truth and they automatically think, okay, I'm in this truth now. I know who my God is. I know I'm an Israelite. I know I'm keeping the commandment. And a lot of times people think it get easier. People try to sweep what they what they went through under the rug. They try to, so it's a lot of times people, we come into this truth and we think, we, we hide that. We, we, we think it's not there no more. We think that pain and that feeling not there no more when we come and serve the most high. It's like, okay, now I know I'm, I'm, I'm keeping the commandments. Uh, I ain't dealing with that no more. I'm wise. But then when you just sit down and really just think about it and you realize that, that, that you know, you still hurt inside, you realize that you have not healed from whatever you went through. And that's why I want to pull this scripture. This 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. Examine yourself whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Yahweh shies in you. Except you be um, reprobates, so you have to you have to examine yourself, man. You know you you know you. Nobody know you more than you know you, right? So you have to you have to examine yourself when it comes to you, because you may be dead. You may have dealt with something in your past, and you come into the knowledge of the truth, and you think you, you think you done uh, dealt with it, but then when you just sit down and examine yourself and meditate and you know, and truly think, am I really over this? Did, did, I, did I really forgive that person for what they did to me? And then you kind of thought, you, you start realizing, oh, this still mess with me. Like, I have not healed from this situation. I just dug it under the dirt, but it have not been dealt with. So this video, I'm going to try to help brothers and sisters deal with childhood trauma and you know, Lord willing, it's through the spirit and power of the Most High God Himself. You know, this ain't just ain't me. You know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just dust and ashes. I lean on the scriptures, so everything I say, I want to try, I want to come out the scriptures, man, because it's the truth. The scriptures is the truth, and I want to, um, want to help brothers and sisters over, or, or overcome that's what they're going through, what they've been through, man. So. Let me get this. Let me get this scripture right here. This is the book of Psalms. Um, Psalms. One 
This is it is Psalms 119 and verse 9. Whether wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? So the only way that you really truly gonna heal, brothers and sisters, the only way that you really truly gonna heal, rather whatever you've been through, is to come back to the to the most high God and keep his commandments. And that's literally the only way you Start keeping the commandments of God. You start reading this Bible and you start having faith and start praying and fasting. That's truly the only way you're going to heal. And it's not, it's not going to, especially if you went through a whole lot of stuff, it's not going to happen overnight. Don't come into this truth and expect to be healed that same day or two days later, which is not possible. I mean, it's possible. Anything, Philippians 4.13 is possible. But the Most High God may not allow that to be your lot. He may not allow you to heal in two days. He may want you to you know to um, build yourself up. Some people may heal in two days when they come into this truth. I'm not saying this. I'm not saying it's impossible. But a lot of times, a lot of people don't heal quick like that when they first come into this truth. They they just don't, man. So you have to learn this Bible. Once you continue to study and read this Bible, that's when you start seeing things like you you start feeling better right you start feeling better and now i'm gonna show you something real quick when you get wisdom of solomon let me get this verse right here um and it's, it's spirit everything is spiritual when you realize that life will be easier this is the book of wisdom of solomon chapter 16 and verse 12 for it is neither herb nor mollifying plaster that restored them to health but that word, O Lord, which healeth all things. So that that's a very that's a very, very beautiful scripture, man, the wisdom of Solomon. I think that's I think that's a very beautiful scripture because a lot a lot of times our people turn to um to, to mainly the herb. They turn to that weed basically to be their healing. Because a lot of our, a lot of our people, they don't know the most high God. They they may say they do, they may say they know God, they love God. But a lot of times, our people don't really truly know God or the Most High God, Yahweh, because they don't read or study to know Him. The only way you're going to truly know Him, the things that He like, the things that He dislike, is if you be in your word and study. But a lot of our people don't. They turn to coping mechanisms like weed. A lot of our people turn to weed. Some of our people turn to sex. Some of our people turn to crack or uh, anything that they can, money, anything that they can to try to make them cope with the situation that they're going through. A lot of people get drunk. But the Bible said that's not it's, that's not going to restore you. That's going to only make you feel good temporarily. It may numb you for a few hours, but that, that's going to be gone. It said, but the word, O Lord, healeth all things. That word, the scriptures, is what's going to heal you. Not temporarily, forever. This, this, this is gonna this is gonna heal you forever, man. This word. I think that that's a be that's a beautiful, beautiful scripture, man. Because that's what we a lot of our people grew up on. When you going through something, when you sad and depressed, your homeboy, your homegirl handing you the blood. They handing you the liquor. That's the first thing they that's the first thing that they doing. Oh, you, you let's go party. Let's go get your mind off of it. Let's go party. So a lot of our people so used to doing that they used to they used to people when they try to express themselves they used to people just try, just giving them things coping mechanisms to heal so that's they used to that they used to smoking that weed when they depressed they used to smoking that weed or that cigarette when they stressed out they're not used to turning to the most high god because all they know is is weed all they know is the cigarette all they know is uh the sex is going to make me feel good and a lot of times a lot of women a lot of times a lot of women um have sex with all these different men because they try to they try to feel that feeling that they didn't have with their father they want to be loved by a man because they didn't it wasn't loved by their father so they sleep with all these different men to try to make themselves feel good and cope without that what they try to cope um, for not having a father in their life, without having that father love, that we say a father is very important in a um in a child's life, especially a, yeah, a, both of them, but especially a daughter, because that's the first man she supposed to know how to trust and love, right? You supposed to be that example to her, 
So when she go find another man, when she get older, she go find a husband she, or a husband find her. She like, nah, I ain't. My dad taught me different than that. You know, he, he, you know, my dad, I know how my, basically, you know what I'm saying? She, she gonna know a good man and a bad man by you, by how you treated her. So, yeah, man. So that, that weed and stuff is not going to help you heal from your trauma. The only thing that's going to help you heal from that trauma is time. And coming back to the Most High God and His Word. Literally the only thing, man. So when you get James 5 and 15. Uh, James 5 and 15. It say, In the prayer, it say, In the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise them up. And if he hath committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. So this is the, this is the key part I wanted. It says, in the prayer, the faith sh shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise them up. So this is, where, this is where a lot of people have to understand. This can be talking about sick, and it's like you got, you sick, like you physically sick, but it also be talking about spiritually sick. Because this is why I say it'll be easier for you to heal when you come into the knowledge of the what the bible said not me they were the bible said to be easier for you to heal brothers and sisters when you come into the knowledge of the truth because you start to you, you really start to see you start to understand the most high god's judgments you start to understand how you start to see when people have demons on them you start to see oh that's a spirit i'm not finna i'm not finna let that get me upset because i know that person got a demon on them i'm not finna get out the, I'm not going to get out of character because I know that person got a demon on him. I know he, that Satan that's on that person that's trying to get to me. Once you start reading this Bible, your your you, your life get easier and it's easier for you to forgive that person that may have wronged you. Because it's like you realize the most high God is what's going to save you and heal you. So a lot of our people are spiritually sick out here, man. When you see our people, out, when you just look at so-called black people and Hispanic people, our people are spiritually sick. They spiritually sick. When you see these, when you see our people on drugs, when you see our people just bugged out and strung out, when you see um, our people just out here doing crazy stuff, uh, yelling and screaming and foaming out the mouth understand de demons are real evil spirits are real a lot of our people be having those evil spirits on them man and once you realize that it's like bro it ain't i'm not i need to, ain't enough for me to get upset about it that, that, that person just sick so if that person wronged you when, when they was when, when that, if a person wronged you when when you was young may have stole something from you or beat you up, or you made your daddy would be on your mom. But you gotta look at that like, bro, they they don't know, they sick, cause they don't have the laws of God. Let me show you something. Let me show y'all something, bro. You gotta think these were the people that Yahweh Shai, um, who the world called Jesus Christ. He was going around healing people like that. These people that were spiritually sick. A lot of those, a lot of that's the same people now. Our people are spiritually sick, bro. They have demons on them. This Proverbs um six and twenty three, for the commandment is a lamp and the law is light and reproofs of instruction on the ways of life. So the Bible said that the um the commandments is a lamp and the law is a light. That law, the commandments of God is a light so if the laws of god bring you the light what do what what do people have when they're not keeping the commandments of god they in darkness that's why they, that's why this world is in so much darkness because everybody's just going off their emotions and how they feel they're not going off the bible and how god feel they they going off what they think is right that's why so much wickedness on this earth this world is in darkness and the people is in darkness so when you, a lot of people have demons on them, man. And demons can hop on anybody. A demon hopped on Peter. And what Christ told that demon? Or Satan. Get thee behind me, Satan. But he was talking to Peter, though. Because Satan hopped on Peter. So Satan hop on anybody to try to get you out of the spirit. To get you out of character. That's why when you come into this knowledge of the truth, um, you pray for that spirit of discernment. discernment 
And you just pray that the most high God reveal stuff to you. He you can you will see demons on people, man. You will see how they moving. You will see that jealousy, that jealousy, that anger, that envy. Those are demons, bro. So you just have to, you just have to remember if people are you have to and you have to I'm gonna get those scriptures, you have to forgive, bro. Cause now our people just don't know. They they just don't know. They think what they do is in they some people think they what they do is right, and some people know they what they do is wrong. But if they just sick, them demons be plaguing their mind to make them think, oh, it's okay. I'm that person. I, I hate that person. That's how you know it's a demon when the person say they hate a person and they don't question. They don't. They don't. They don't think like, damn, is that, is that a right? Am I supposed to hate? God don't want me to hate that person. They don't think about that, man. They just go off their emotions. I hate that person. I'm not talking to that person no more. They're like, dang, that's not moving like Christ. Because they have demons on them. And a lot of people don't even know. They don't even know when a demon's on them, man. A lot of times they don't even know if demons on them. But when you have that spirit of discernment, right, and you be able to read people, you can see if a person got a demon on them if a, or if a person not in their right mind, man. And that's, that's very, very important to healing. Because when you understand these things, when you realize that, like I was saying, these uh, these situations that we go through with so-called black people, a lot of us, a lot of our people, a lot of our family members, close friends, they don't have the laws of God. They don't have that light inside them. So they're going to do what they please. So let me get this verse. When you get, um, now check this out. What I had, what I just pulled you let me get um. This is the book of Jeremiah. Let me get that. Jeremiah, chapter seventeen and verse fourteen. And this is this is a prayer that you can pray, because prayer is understand this. Prayer is real, man. There's been times where I, my spirit, I've been feeling heavy. I just been feeling like I know when Satan know me, man. I, I can I know. And then sometimes it be hard. It's not. Sometimes it's not. It's not easy to get Satan off you. But I just. I remember times when Satan used to be on me, and I would pray, and I just feel a relief. Like I would. I would feel a whole bunch of weight just getting off me. That happened a lot of times. This is Jeremiah seventeen to fourteen. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For thou art my praise. When you pray to the Lord and ask him to heal you, you have to truly believe that. He will heal you. He will heal you from anything that you've been going through. See, a lot of times our people haven't really been healing because they haven't been asking the Lord to heal them because they've been thinking that they over, um, or they've been thinking that they don't have, um, they've been thinking that they basically, basically um, damn, I my mind going blank. <laughs> My bad, so like it. They done, they've been thinking that they overcame what they was dealing with during their, uh, their childhood trauma. So that's why they haven't been praying for the Lord to heal them because they think they already, already overcame it. But once you realize, dang, I'm still battling this. Like, I haven't overcame it. I still feel some type of way. It still bother me. That's when you start asking the Lord to heal you. You start praying that. You start praying that constantly, asking the Lord to heal you. And he's going to heal you, man. It might not happen right away or it might will. But that's when that patience come in. You have to wait, man. And he will heal you. He will heal you. You don't have to turn to that weed. You don't have to turn to that cigarette. You don't got to turn to that meth. You ain't got to turn to that money. You know what I'm saying? To make you try to feel good. The most High God will heal you. He said, heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. He will heal you. He will have to now, brothers and sisters may feel like I can't, I can't never heal from this. This is this scarred me for life. I can't do this. This situation has scarred me for life. I, I'm gonna always be messed up because of this. But you gotta understand, bro. Even people, people in this truth right now went through a lot. People done went through a lot as a child in their childhood. Hey, even in the Bible, think about Paul. Paul, Paul was uh, persecuting the church. Before he came into the knowledge of uh, him being Israel, of course, and following Christ, he persecuted the people that was following Christ. He repented and started following Christ. But how you think Paul felt? Because you got to think about this. 
Paul had to be thinking, even though he, even though he came into the the knowledge of and start falling in Christ, best believe it wasn't easy for Paul to just to be like, okay, I used to do that. I used to get these folks killed, but it actually be the old me. Now I'm healed because I'm in the knowledge of Christ. No, I I bet I, I'm I'm um I bet money, bro, that Paul. It, it, he thought about that, man. He made he made he probably cried when thinking about the stuff he used to do. He, he probably cried. He probably, you know, he probably was depressed. He probably got stressed out. He probably, he probably thought about that 24-7. I used to, I used to get these folks killed. And they ain't do nothing wrong. I used to get these people killed. And all he was doing was following Christ, following Yahweh Shai. That wasn't easy for Paul. Paul wasn't just like, okay, I used to do that. Cool. Now I'm new. That was all that was the old me. Now I'm, I'm new. No. Me speaking as a man and how and how I how our emotions are. That wasn't easy for Paul. That wasn't easy for Paul to accept what I what he used to do, what he went through. But he healed. Right? Best believe as he asked the Lord, because Paul was a mighty brother. Best believe he was asking the Lord to heal him. Best believe he was in the book of Psalms 24-7. Praying those prayers that David was saying. He was in there, man. Because he really wanted forgiveness for what he was doing. He wanted to heal. He, he was tired of being depressed. He was tired of being stressed. Getting stressed out. Satan plaguing his mind on the stuff he used to be. Telling him that he's he a wicked nigga still. He ain't, he ain't no, he ain't, you ain't nothing, Paul. You was getting these folks killed. You wicked. The Lord ain't going to forgive you. Now, Paul, 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 Paul probably stressed out like that. He probably drinking a little bit, a little bit too much. Me speaking as a man, but you just, you just, you just never know, man. So that I'm, I'm saying this, um, so people can, so people can think about this more on a little side when they was, when they was, um, younger or childhood type. You may have did things, somebody may have did something to you, and like, dang, bro, I don't know if I can't do that. I, or you may have did something to somebody that that may have you may have did something to somebody that may have hurt you for from uh being a child and now you like dang I used to do that I done did that to somebody dang I can't never forgive myself I don't, I can't I can't I ain't gonna never forgive myself for what I did but you got you gotta think about Paul you gotta think about like dang the Most High God if He healed Paul He'll heal me right He can heal me I I've been through a lot. Not, I'm just saying, speaking as uh, um, the audience, of course, I, I did. You know what I'm saying? Not, not, not more so. I've been through stuff, but I, I didn't really have um, me speak. I didn't really have childhood trauma, but I know people that that did. You know what I'm saying? I, I know, I know people that um, brothers, uh, brothers that grew up with parents that were alcoholics. You know what I'm saying? And it was hard for them. I know, I know uh, people that done got. You know, touched on when they was younger. I, I know people like that. So it's like the only way you're gonna heal from those situations is coming back to the father, man. Coming back to the father. That's the only way. Anything, anything you're going through, that's gonna be the only thing that's gonna heal you. Is coming back to the father. Jeremiah 17 and 14. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For thou art my praise. So the most I like, bro, heal me. Heal me and I, I, I shall be healed. And that's faith. He's saying this. He's he not he not saying this kind of questioning. Heal me, Lord, and I shall be saved. Will you, are you going to save me if, I, if I'm praying to you? This is, he's saying, heal me, O Lord, and I shall be saved. He had faith, bro. He knew. If I, if you, if I pray this, I'm going to be saved. Not I might. Or he could save save me. This is what you call faith. He said, "I know I'm gonna be saved, man." So when you get when you get the book of um Isaiah Isaiah forty one when you get the book of Isaiah chapter forty one and verse ten, he say, "This is one of my favorite verses. I gotta start reading this verse more." This is Isaiah forty one and ten. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yeah, I will help thee. 
Yeah, I will uphold thee with thy right hand and my righteousness. So the Most High God, he, bro, he literally saying, bro, I'm here to help you. Like, you know how you're on a physical level when you sit, you have doctors, they post to help, they post to help you, they post to heal you, heal your body, whatever you're going through physically. Yahweh, God is like that spiritual doctor, right? He, he'll heal you. He also can heal you physically too, but he also a spiritual doctor. He heal you spiritually. He said, I will strengthen you and I will help you. So he's going to help you. He's going to he's going to make you strong. You have to call upon him, right? Call upon him. What what the scripture say? What what the scripture say? Um, this is the book of um Matthew chapter seven and verse seven. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. So the, all you got to do is ask. See a lot of a lot of our people get to the point where they be scared to ask or they don't believe in what they asking. You literally got to, and people be thinking, well, it, this might be too much for the Lord. He might can't be able to do this. The Bible said, ask and he shall give you. So if you ask for healing, it's nothing for the Lord to heal you. It's, it's nothing for the Lord to heal you, man. But you got to have faith and believe that he can heal you. And, and people got to understand, a lot of times we go through stuff to be a testimony and help the next person. Because you best believe what you went through as a child, you're not the only person. I'm here to, I, fact, let me get that verse. The Bible, the Bible tell you that, but it said, it's a temptation though. But this, um, this first Corinthians 10 and 13, there have no temptation taking you, but such as coming to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able but with the temptation, also make a way to escape that she may be able to bear it. So this is really talking about temptation when it's saying that nobody ain't going through nothing. Basically, it's nothing new under the sun. If you get, if you're going through a temptation or you struggle with something, you're not the only person that's struggling with it. It's hundred thousands of brothers and sisters struggling with the same thing that you're struggling with. So don't let Satan tell you you're the only person struggling with it. No, it's plenty of. That's why we make videos. This is why the Most High God allow you to go through stuff for testimonies and so you can help the next brother that, or sister that went through the same thing you went through. So it's, it, it's a reason why you went through that childhood uh, trauma. It's a reason behind everything. Right? One, because we wasn't keeping the laws of God. Right? And that was, that was his judgment. If, you know what I'm saying? And another thing is because it, you can... You can um, be that testimony to that next brother and sister. Just say, just say, you watch your your dad or you watch your parents fight fight each other every day. Every day when you came home from school and you was a child, you you watch your dad beat on your mom, and that that that, that mess with you, man. That mess with you. So you 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 struggle with that. You come into the knowledge of the truth. You heal from that. Now, somebody coming up to you and asking you, bro, how do you deal with um, childhood trauma, like growing up, watching your dad beat your mom? You can tell them how to overcome it because you overcame it. See what I'm saying? So a lot of times we go through stuff, not because the Lord hates you, it's because he building you up so you can build the next brother and sister up and you can, y'all both can glorify him. Everything that Yahweh do is for us to glorify him. Right, he put us in situations and we overcome those situations and we give him praise because we realize we didn't do this on our own. And a lot of times, brothers start thinking they're doing this stuff on their own. Then the Lord humble them. Then they go back and they see the they go back and pray to the Father, like, dang, I can't do this on my own. He's showing me. I can't do this on my own. So a lot of times we go through stuff. He allows us to go through stuff just like how he did in Egypt when he played Egypt. He did that to show his power. He did that to show us in Egypt that he the real, that he the God, man, that nobody ain't with him, or he the true God. So a lot of times, man, your childhood, the trauma, anything you went through, 
it's a testimony. It's it's it's, it's a way. It's a, a time for you to give your testimony. Somebody gonna need it. when you making videos or when we talking to somebody. Somebody gonna need to hear it because a lot of people go. A lot of people more than you know relating to what you've been through. A lot of people, man. We don't. We gotta think about it. We a lot of us. A lot, and it's crazy. I done seen pictures and videos. A lot of us, a lot of us, so-called black people, we done been through a lot of similar stuff. It may we may be living in different states and different hoods, but a lot of us, we done lived a similar lifestyle, man. We a lot of us done, you know, we done. Our grandma done pulled the, uh, uh, especially if you from the south. We done, we done, we done, we done seen our cousins or us get uh, grandma Terry to go pick a switch off the. Uh, off the tree, and you go pick. You go try to pick the smallest. Uh, uh, uh. You you go try to pick the smallest. Um, dang, the uh limb off the tree, and she like, no, go get me a big one. Go get me a big one. And you're like, okay, and then you finna get a whooping. And a lot of people don't. A lot of people can't relate to that. Like, dang, we don't. I went through that too. Grandma telling me to get a switch off the tree, and I try to grab the smallest switch, and she tell me no, go grab me a big one, and then you know she whoop you. We don't, we don't. We went through a lot of a lot of similarities, man. Girl, you, may, you know, you might you might get um. It, I don't know. It's just be a lot, but we 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 go through a lot a lot of so called black people, man. Cause we are the same people, and our parents say similar. Like a lot of people, parents say the similar things to like they. It just it just be real real similar, man. So a lot of us can relate to each other. So, um, yeah, there's more people than you know that need to hear your story and hear that you healed because that get him hope if he healed if the god of israel healed him and he got and he healed from the bible then that means i can do the same thing i got hope i don't gotta go to the blunt no more i ain't gotta go to the to the uh the lean on the alcohol no more i don't gotta do that because that brother he didn't do that and he healed he healed for good so i know i got i can do the same thing and I gotta do the same thing to heal for good. And when you do that, that's gonna give the most high God glory. Because folks gonna praise him and praise his his words. Cause they healed from those words. I hey mean, the most high God here genius. So when you get um now when you get that um now this is what I want to touch on real quick. When you get Matthew 6, um Matthew 6, and it, it, this, this be the toughest thing for a lot of people. Forgiving. Forgiveness. That be the toughest thing. Forgiving that person that may have wronged you when you was younger. Forgiving that person that you just scarred you and you feel like I can never trust nobody. Right? I, can, I can never trust no more men. I can never trust no more women. But you got to forgive them. I know folks may think that's crazy. Well, I can't forgive. What is he talking about? He don't know what I've been through. He can't tell me to forgive. He don't know my situation. Check this out. This is Matthew chapter 6 and verse 14. For if, for if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father um, forgive your trespasses. So the Most High God, he was like, man, you, if if you want me, now we all want forgiveness. We all done did something that we need forgiveness for the Lord. We want Him to forgive us, cause if you don't forgive us, what that mean? If you don't forgive us for our sins, that means we gonna get we gonna get put in that lake of fire. Why well, we gonna burn for eternity if He don't have mercy upon us? And in order for Him to forgive us, we must forgive the people that wronged us. That's the only way. The only way we, only way we're gonna get forgiveness is, for, is forgive that person that wronged us, man. Now I want y'all. I'm gonna um, if when y'all have a chance, um, I want, a lot of people. I don't, I don't know if a lot of people know the brother, but I listen to this brother personally. His name is Paisley the Hebrew. That's where I got this shirt from. I got the shirt um, anti atheist from the brother Paisley the Hebrew. Now he made music. If anybody got um Apple Music, he got an album called the juice now he got a song on that album called um i forgive you and i encourage every brother and sister to listen to that song by page of the hebrew i forgive you man that's that's a beautiful song It's going into forgiving and forgiveness to your brother and sister because 
Understand this. This is why the Most High God is saying, forgive the people that wronged you. You being upset with them is not going to, it's not hurting them. It's hurting you. Being upset with your dad because he left you when you was younger is not hurting him. It's hurting you. He not, he, you're feeling those emotions. So the only way you're going to truly heal from that is to forgive that person. If you don't forgive that person, you're going to continue to feel how you feel. Right. If you don't, if you're not, if you don't forgive yourself for what you did, for what you did to somebody else, you're going to continue to uh, uh, not forgive yourself. So the Bible said, for if you forgive men that trespass your father, I mean, trespass your heavenly father will also forgive you because that shows strength. No, that's hard, man. I'm not here. I'm not sitting here saying that's easy. That's an easy thing to forgive somebody, especially a person that wronged you. That's a hard thing to do. But that shows strength. If you're able to forgive somebody that wronged you, that's strength. Because a lot of people can't do that. A lot of people, they take action. They go kill somebody. They go everywhere to fight. Because they can't they can't forgive that person. But a person, a woman and a man that can forgive somebody that wronged them, that's strength. Don't give them power over you. When you when you when you upset at that person. And you angry at that person, you cussing that person out, you are giving them power over you. Don't give them power over you, bro. Just forgive them. Sincerely forgive them. And it may take time. Work on yourself. Forgive that person and move on. Understand that person was sick. Right? That person had demons on them. Right? And that person don't repent, the Lord gonna deal with them. But you got to forgive. If you don't forgive, the Lord ain't going to forgive you for your sins. He's not going to forgive you for when you do wrong. We all need forgiveness from the Lord. Right? We all, you know, could we all go off. You know what I'm saying? We might slip up and go off. So we need the Most High God to have mercy on us and forgive us for our iniquities. But if we don't forgive our brother and our sister, anybody that trespassed against us, how is he going to forgive us? That's like, that's just like, he looking at it like, basically he looking at it like, you can't forgive your brother for what he did to you. And sometimes the, the person that you, the person that come and apologize to, to you and you still can't forgive them. If the apology is like, if they, they're coming sincerely apologize, they cry, they really feel bad for what they did to you and you still can't forgive them. The Lord looking at that like, Okay, now you coming to him praying for forgiveness for you. And you, he looking at you like, you can even forgive that person that came to you. So why would I forgive you if you can't even forgive your brothers? If you, if you can't forgive your sisters, why would I forgive you? That's how you look at it. Um, Proverbs 10 and 12. It's Proverbs 10 and 12. Hatred stirreth up strife, but love covereth all sins. So hatred gonna stir up strife, man. When you hate, when you hate and hate that person that wronged you as a child, that's gonna that's gonna do nothing but hurt you. That's gonna have you um that's gonna have you may cause strife with that person. You may kill that person. Now you in prison. For life. Now what you gonna do in there? What you gonna do in there? You see what I'm saying? You may have killed somebody. That's not gonna make you feel better. You not it, that's gonna that's not gonna make you feel better when you kill that person. The Bible said, but love covered all sins. You gotta you gotta love that person, man. That's gonna cover all sins. It's like your sins are blotted out. It's a charity says it's a scripture that say charity covered the multitude of sins too. So charity it will. That covered all sins, man. But you want you want to forget that. You want to have you want to forget that person and don't let let that person have power over you stronger. Stronger than what you think. The most high God said he gave us power. You have power. You just you just have to um you just have to, you just have to You have power. You just have to find out how to um how to use it.
You got the power to heal. You have the power through the through the Most High God. You have the power to heal. You have the power to forgive. You have the power to grow. You just have to keep this, these commandments. This Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. The Most High God said, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. All the, because understand, like I, like the Bible said, let me pull that. The Lord said he give you power to tread upon enemies and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, when you, when you, uh, still reminiscing on childhood trauma that's still bothering you, that's Satan. That's Satan trying, that's Satan messing with your head, getting that to continue to bother you. That's Satan. But the Lord said, he just said that he give you power over the enemy. The, the enemy, the main enemy is Satan. So you got power over Satan. You have power. This, the word, the Bible is your power. The book that people want to say is a white man book. The book that people want to say is a fairy tale. It's fake. It's been translated 30 times. How can we trust it? I'm not reading that book. I'm going to read the Quran. The Bible have power. That's your, that's your source. That's your sword to, to bring down those wicked thoughts. Man, come on, man. Let me get this real quick. This second, let me start at um. Second Corinthians ten. Did I bring that already? This is the book of Second Corinthians chapter ten verse five. Let me start. Let me start at. Let me start at verse three. Second Corinthians chapter ten and verse three. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war against the flesh. It says, for though we, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Yahweh to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So it said, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Yahweh to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, thoughts of your past. Thoughts of how you used to be. Thoughts of what you went through. Yahweh is the only person that's going to be able to help you cast those things down. Without the Most High God and His Son, Yahweh Shah, we are nothing. He is. That's what's going to heal us, man. That's how we're going to beat Satan. That's how we're going to beat the adversary. By by this word. By, coming, by using this word, man. It's Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of God is quick, which is the Bible. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharpening any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow uh, and, um, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So the Bible, um, the, Bible the scripture of the Bible is quick and powerful and sharpening any two-edged sword. That Bible will cut you, man. Right, it confounds you. Um, it'll have you um examine yourself. Hey, I wasn't doing this right. Right, I got I gotta do this better. Hey, the Bible also cuts Satan up. It'll cut Satan up. Hey, hey, if you going through something, Satan trying to plague your mind, have you overthink about things of this earth. Open your Bible up and start reading, or throw a prayer, a call a brother that's gonna give you exhortation. Now watch how now watch how you feel better. You feel better because you just cut Satan up. You just cut him up. He he left. So you can overcome what you're going through. You can overcome those childhood traumas. But you must use the word. You that's why the word here. Use what the most high God got you. Use what He's giving you. Use the Bible. He's giving you that. That's a free weapon to cut Satan up. Use that. Don't just let it sit on your counter. Or your bookshelf um, with dust all on it. You ain't read it in three years. Blow the dust off of it. Open it up. Get your highlighter and start reading it. Start uh, marking stuff. 
That's what's going to help you heal. That's what's going to help you cut Satan up. It's Satan. Satan, Satan the one that's telling you to go to the blunt. Satan the one that's putting, that's that's uh, forcing you to, to go get drunk. Man, go, go to the party, bro. That's going to take your mind off of it. Think about your childhood trauma and what you went through. That was bad, wasn't it? Think about it some more. Satan wants you to think about it. Satan wants you to get depressed over it. That's what he wants you to do. That's Satan. Every Remember, everything is spiritual. Everything is spiritual. Understand that. Everything. Everything is spirits. When you look at it like that with a spiritual eye, you'll realize Satan is Satan is the cause of a lot of stuff, bro. A, a lot of stuff that people go through is Satan. It's, it's them demons. It's demons. That's why you got to come to this light and keep the commandments of God. Ephesians, I want to see if I want that. Six. It's the book of Ephesians, chapter 6 and verse 12. But verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wise of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of God's for peace. Above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there too with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So, pray, hey, that, it just told you what to put on. Ephesians 6 just told you what to focus on. That's the armor. That's the whole armor of God, man. You have to be, you have to be, you have to be prepared. That's just like when when folks when folks went to war, and back then even now they're not finna go to war unprepared. They're not finna go to war without a helmet, without a breastplate on, without a sword. Back then they wasn't finna do that. Even football, folks not finna play a game in the NFL without no shoulder pads, without no helmet on, without no uh no cleats. They that's, that's you're not prepared. So you have to be prepared spiritually for Satan. Man, you have to put on that whole armor. You have to put the the whole armor of Christ on. And had that sword with you, bro. And had that everything that it, it mentioned in Ephesians chapter six. You have to have that on spiritually to overcome him. Cause he he, he waiting. He going around. What the scripture say? He going around seeking who he can devour. Satan is going around seeking all the souls. He trying to get all the souls he can. He going around messing with people to try to take their soul, man. So this James. Let me get this last. Let me get this last verse right quick. Did that bring up? No, I didn't bring this up. I got two more. It's Proverbs 10 and verse 12. I did bring it up, bring it up. So I got one more. It's James 4 and 7. It says, submit yourself, therefore, to God, resist the devil, he will flee from you. Now, this is one of my favorite verses, too. So, it, it, James says, submit yourself, therefore, to God. So, if you're if you struggling with childhood trauma still to this day, and you realize it, this video may have real, this is everything of the most high God. You may have watching this video, and you realizing, you thinking like, damn, did I really heal from that situation? I didn't. I really didn't heal from it. I covered it up. The most high say, Submit yourself to him. Now, how you submit yourself to him? Let's get it. How do you submit yourself? What do you have to do to submit yourself to the Lord? What do he want you to do? It's Deuteronomy 10 and 12. And now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. 
keep keep reading on me. I get no word. Um to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I commanded this day for thy good. So he that's how you're going to submit yourself to him. By uh, serving him, walking in his ways, fearing him, which is it all sums up to keeping his commandments. When you keep the most high God commandments, that's you submitting yourself to him. When you repenting and changing from your ways, that's you submitting yourself to God. You humbling yourself down. It says resist the devil. So you humble yourself, you serve the most high God, you, res you start resisting Satan. You start resisting those things that you used to do. Right? You start resisting those wicked thoughts that Satan want, that Satan put in your mind to make you try to think about the stuff you went through, the stuff you did as a child. You resist those. And it says that he will flee from you. That's what I was saying earlier. You open your Bible and start reading. You get on your knees and pray. Uh you you listen you you, you listen to a, a, a edification video. Or maybe just listen to some Bible readings on your phone. If you if you can't, if you're not strong enough to Satan on your back, even times when Satan was on my back so heavy, bro, I can even. It was hard for me to even read, but I turned on some, I turned on um some uh, Bible readings on my phone, and I was still getting the word. He he fled, he fled. So the Bible real, Satan will flee from you, bro. Once you once he starts seeing that you healing, he out of there. He dealing with you now because you don't know what the light is. You don't know that you got to. You don't know what you got to do to heal. You don't know that you got to come to the Most High God to heal. He's telling you that all these coping mechanisms is what you need. But once people start realizing, I got to come to the Most High. I got to keep His commandments. I got to read my Bible. He'll flee. He may come back. He may not. He may come back with another demon to try to test you. But he will flee eventually. When he see that you getting better, when he see that you getting stronger, he will flee and you will get stronger. All right, so Lord Williamsville was edified, man. Brothers and sisters, keep the faith. Right, turn to the Father in these last days. We gonna need, we need him more than ever right now, cause you may be, you may be by yourself when stuff hit the fan. Right, so you may not be with your brothers, you you may not be with your wife, you may not be with your husband, you may not be with your parents when when all hell break loose on this earth. So you need to build a relationship with the father, man. I need to build a better relationship with the father. Because we're going to need him more than ever in that time. Right? So with that, this brother Obadiah from New Wine Congregation. And I want to give all honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah. I'm going to say Shalom. Hormi Asherah.